So as you know, a year ago, I received my COVID vaccine when I gladly signed up for a clinical trial here in the United States with AstraZeneca. I, uh, as a participant of a clinical trial, I was constantly reassured that if something were to go wrong, there would be thorough and meticulously developed protocols in place to provide a safety net, that the data would be collected and the benefits as well as the risks would be assessed and disclosed to the public. I never had any issue with any vaccine, so I figured this was going to be a smooth, easy ride. No big deal. Prior to my involvement, the pharmaceutical company agreed to pay any medical expense as a result of a possible injury. Unfortunately, for a lack of support on their part, we have had to refinance our home to pay for our medical expenses. Like Maddie's trial, we had a tracking app. Like Maddie's trial, our tracking app had pre-designated symptoms in a bullet list with no free form to add any other symptoms. So anything like tingling, tremors, seizures, paresthesias, heart problems, limb weakness, there was no way for us to track that through the app. The clinical trial report published by the New England, New England Journal of Medicine, if I have that slide, it says that the second dose is required to continue in a study. Because my reaction was so severe, AstraZeneca told me I was not allowed to get the second dose. They dropped me from the trial. My data was lost. I was excluded from the trial results. My access to the trial app was deleted. This is different than what is found in the report, which says that these individuals chose to forego the second dose. Because I couldn't fi finish the series, I was removed. Why doesn't this data matter? The clinical trial report also says serious adverse events will be recorded from the time of signed informed consent through day 730. I last heard from them on day 60. I am almost at day 365. That is 10 months of critical safety data gone. I continue to suffer and decline as the trial progressed without me. So what are the agencies doing about this? As we have heard, there's a lot of questions that need answers. The heads of the NIH, FDA, and CDC have known firsthand about my case and thousands of others. These direct reports began as early as last December. I, along with several injured physicians, continued to reach out to the FDA through emails, phone calls. We did video conferences with Peter Marks and Janet Woodcock, constant emails with Janet Woodcock and myself directly. We have literally asked and we have begged repeatedly for them to acknowledge these reactions. They declined. They know about their lack, they know that their lack of acknowledgement has recreated, created insurmountable barrier to our ability to receive medical care from doctors who rely on these agencies for information. They know about the issues with the clinical trials. They know about the deaths. They know about the lack of follow-up on VAERS. They know about the injuries to children. They know about Maddie. I have discussed Maddie with them. They know about the mandates imposed on the injured. They know about the suicides as the results of months long suffering. They know about the aggressive censorship. They know about the media censorship. They know about the scientific censorship. They know all of it. And they have for months. What does the NIH know? I was one of a lucky few to go to the NIH for research in this area. There was about 50 to 60 people that participated in this research. There was invasive testing, all of the top of the line tests you can imagine, tests that aren't even available to the public. We were instructed by the NIH not to talk about the research. We gladly complied, confident in their reassurances that they would publish their research last summer, which would finally open the door for all victims. 
all of these people to receive appropriate medical care. Unfortunately, the NIH is no longer accepting calls on behalf of the injured. This happened shortly after the FDA met with us. This vital lifeline that saved hundreds, myself included, and maybe thousands, that lifeline has now been cut off. The NIH has told me and others that this is an immune-mediated response to the spike protein. CDC, FDA, NIH, we do exist. Your system is broken and you know it. You are constantly and persistently telling the public that your review of the data is thorough and your safety signaling systems are robust, when in reality, there is huge gaps in your system every single step of the way. You are not taking care of those who suffer severe adverse reactions. Stop telling the public that you are. Your refusal to take action means there will be more like us. Take responsibility for your role in the suffering of good Americans who did their part by taking the vaccine and had no idea this could happen to them. Here's your proper informed consent. If you get COVID, you will get medical help. But I'm, fr I'm afraid to tell you, if you have this reaction, that reaction, that reaction, Maddie's reaction, Doug's reaction, you are on your own. The government won't help you. The drug companies won't help you. Your medical teams will have no idea what to do with you. Financially, you will be on your own. You will be completely on your own. I would like to finish with a letter from a friend. that I received a couple of months ago. Bree. I cannot take this any longer. This has taken everything away from me. My career, my family, my life. My body will not stop attacking itself. And this is beyond the worst amount of torture. They have further erased my very existence. Please accept my apologies. I must bid farewell to this world. Please tell our stories. Please make sure the world knows the cruelty that has been imposed upon us. Goodbye, my dear friend. I will see you on the flip side. Rochelle Walensky, Janet Woodcock, Peter Marks, Anthony Fauci. You erased her and the many others like her. Their blood is on your hands. You cannot bring my friends back but you can save others from their fate if you finally just tell the truth. If the government won't help us, if the drug companies won't help us, who will help us? Thank you. Thank you, Bree. I want you to describe because you talk to me after our June event. Going to the June event, there were something like 2,000 people on your various Facebook groups, uh, support groups, uh, people like your friend there that were using that group to comfort each other, uh, provide counseling to, in your case, you're providing counseling to people who are suicidal. Uh, literally within a week, I remember talking to Ken Rutgers, that group had grown to about 5,000. And then describe what Facebook did to your support groups. They found us and quickly pulled us apart. 
they eliminated every single person in those groups and we lost contact with a lot of people that were in crisis. So you mentioned your testimony that NIH knows about this, CDC knows about this, FDA knows about this. Uh, I appreciate what media came here, but not only did we invite these agency heads, we invited mainstream media or more mainstream media, and of course they didn't show up. In our Milwaukee event in June, we actually had you know, probably a couple dozen cameras. We, we had media show up. But unfortunately, not to tell these stories. They showed up, and this isn't about me, but basically so they could then attack me as an anti-vaxxer. Rather than in the papers across Wisconsin, above the fold stories of Bree and Maddie, Ken Rucker's wife. They didn't tell the stories. Instead, they just had a picture of me with the headline, so fundamentally dangerous. That's what we're up against. That's what these people are up against. This is why they're pleading and begging for help. Again, to be seen, to be heard, to be believed, so they can be cured, so they can recover.